The VJ Extreme 2 is an upgrade from one of the best trail running shoes on the market. With a 4mm drop weighing in just 250 grams, it features a fitlock system and 6mm butyl rubber studs. But while its predecessor excelled underfoot, comfort was an issue, making the Extreme a course and distance specific shoe. VJ are renowned for listening to feedback, but can they address the cushioning toe box and upper issues without losing that precise feel and insane security on the harshest of terrain? I've tested the Extreme 2 on moorland, woodland and alpine mountains from 4 mile training runs to 6 hour race efforts. So it's time to find out. Let's get a quick disclaimer out of the way before we dive into the review. I have been sent these shoes out free of charge by VJ, but I'm not paid by the company. All my views are my own and they don't get to see the review before you guys do. And the reality is I've been raving about VJ shoes long before I became an ambassador for them. Right, boring stuff out of the way. Let's begin with what's new for the VJ Extreme 2. <laughs> The original Extreme was very popular with fell runners and trail runners alike, but it had three general complaints, that being the width of the toe box, general comfort and cushioning under foot. I'm glad to say all three have been addressed with the new version. We now have a wider toe box with a nicely padded toe bumper. The midsole is now made of CM Eva, which adds much more cushioning and comfort under foot. And the upper fabric is now made of Shirla Kepratec. This seems to mould to your foot, but that's not where the new features end. We also have a gusseted tongue, which keeps its nice, thin, streamlined design, but avoids the sideways movement. And we have a padded, a more padded um, heel counter. Finally, the new colourway, red and white, which to be honest, I'm quite taken by. It's important to note as well that they haven't reinvented the wheel with the Extreme 2, it still has a lot of the other great features we used to love in the old shoe with its precision fit and that fantastic 6mm butyl rubber outsole. So lots of new features, but how does this translate underfoot? Let's start top down with the upper. I've already mentioned we have a gusseted thin tongue. It's important to note this doesn't cause any rubbing, um, but it is ideal as a racer. It's all brought together with a very simple lacing system, but VJ are exclusive to this thick lot system, which is iconic. It really does wrap around your arch and form a nice, precise fit. And with the new Schurler upper, this just helps wrap around to the shape of your foot and get a fantastic lockdown. The rubber that we mentioned earlier is a bit of a strange one. It acts as a toe bumper. I've had no issues with rocks. However, I was concerned when I first put the shoe on because I could feel rubbing um, on the side of my pinky toe. But while running, I felt absolutely nothing. It's very soft. And as I mentioned, we've raced for almost six hours in this thing. Uh, so if I was gonna have an issue, I'd have had one by now. Talking of rubber, they've also got these rubber parts just on the heel counter itself. Now what this does is it stiffens up the heel to give you a firm lockdown, but means the heel counter itself can stay pliable and flexible, so it's still comfortable. The eyelets, you've got two double ones at the top, so you can do your traditional runner's knot. And all around, this is a super comfortable upper. Real kudos for the updates from VJ, and it doesn't lack any of the old precision fit that I loved with the original. And onto the midsole of the shoe, straight out the box, I could feel the extra cushioning underfoot. Don't get me wrong, this is still a minimalist style shoe, but the extra cushioning just seemed to take the sting out of each stride. I've been in this shoe for a very long time, as mentioned, up in those mountains behind me, and I had zero issues with that side of things. That's also where the rock plate came in, cracking protection, no issues at all with rocks, but it also gave me a little bit of spring back and a bit of feedback as I was trying to go through the gears, which is why I think this would be a good racing shoe even for the shorter distances. Despite the extra cushion, we don't lose any of the stability, and it's worth mentioning that the heel is around the same width as the original Extreme, as is the midfoot, it's in the toe box they've actually widened things out. So we do still keep that precision fit, but with a bit more room for that pinky toe. 
The outsole is what VJ are famous for. That butyl rubber is named the best grip on the planet for a reason. And these six mil lugs are very aggressive. This is hands down the most versatile shoe I've ever used. It grips so well on wet rock, but then the six mil length of the lugs helps grip on muddy surfaces as well. It's ideal for fell running, trail running, sky running, and the fact you can now go longer in it opens you up to much more variety. The only slight negative, this is not a road or tarmac shoe. That soft rubber compound will break down if you use it on the man-made surfaces because it treats it like sandpaper. But in all honesty, if you're buying this shoe, you're not looking at road running. And if you stay away from the tarmac and the road, this outsole will last. It's very durable, probably one of the more durable outsoles I've used over the years. So in conclusion, the VJ Extreme 2 is probably the best trail running shoe I have ever tested. It's certainly taken the place of my Scott Super Track RCs over the last couple of months. And I'll be using this going forward for anything up to marathon distance, maybe even beyond if it's on a super technical course like that one in Romania. And then I'll switch it out for the VJ Ultra when I'm going to those super long distances. The fit is now plenty wide enough for me in the toe box. Of course, that is personal preference, but with the added cushioning as well, this is ideal for races up towards the marathon distance. And as for sizing, I went true to size in an UK eight and a half. Now I do use custom insoles. Um, if you use VJ's originals, which are a bit thicker, you may well need to half size up. I know a few people who've had to do that. That about sums it up for the Extreme 2, but do subscribe to the channel because I'm hoping to get the VJ Ultra 2, the brand Brand new one in the next month or two so we'll be getting a full review of that one as well if you've got any questions at all hit me down in the comments always happy to help and i'll catch you with the next one see you later